Got a super clean OBS Chevy extended cab. Kind of a grandpa truck. Got the topper on it. We're bidding on the 98 Chevy pickup. I just got outbid. I got it at. Oh, oh. Looks like a lot of people want it. 4500 Yeah! I got it! $4,500! <laughs> so that's about a thousand more than I wanted to spend on that. <laughs> that's what you call auction fever. Welcome to Speed Bump Garage. My name is Kent, and I think this is going to be episode three of our consignment auction. It's been a few weeks since the auction. We purchased this truck. It's a 98 Chevy half ton. Vortec 350 has 208,000 miles on it, but seems to be in really good shape. I bought it at the online auction. We did go the day before the auction and take a look at it. Spent probably less than two minutes looking at it. Didn't really expect to buy it. Ended up buying it for $4,500. The truck's got some more issues than I noticed in our brief walk around. Still think I got a pretty good deal on it. The other thing I bought is that yellow school bus back there. Really, that was a super impulse buy. Didn't We did look at it just because that used to be my boy's school bus. We were thinking if we were gonna buy one, it'd be funny to buy their old bus. But this truck, I have more knowledge of the OBS Chevy platform than the Bluebird school bus platform, but still didn't look it over that great. I think we can make money on this truck. I haven't decided if we're gonna flip it or keep it. Currently my daily driver is the 88 Ford over here, over there. This would be an upgrade from it, but it's not four wheel drive. And we use the four wheel drive on the old Ford quite a bit. So I don't think we'll be replacing it for my daily driver. I want to start fixing a lot of the little stuff on this and i told you guys at the end of the auction video we'd be giving you an update on this truck we drove it home ran flawlessly probably only got up to 60 mile an hour it needs tires tires are in pretty bad shape and needs some work on the front seat but seems to be a super solid truck i think it's a one owner it came out of an estate Hardly a scratch in the bed. I think it's probably had this topper on it most of its life. And I'm out here away from the shop because Jack is over there power washing the school badging and stuff off the bus trying to get it to legal to drive. Did get some bad news on that. My buddy Daniel over at Arms Family Homestead, he is a retired state trooper and he sent me a screenshot of the Oklahoma state law that says school buses cannot be yellow for personal use and that's a whole lot of yellow to cover up but that's for another episode jack's just trying to do some leg work for us to make that job a little easier let's check out the 98 chevy so this seat is broken so i know for sure we're gonna have to pull this seat out an issue i've been having is these door checks are locked up and it's actually bent the door pin i need to try to get some curl or something on that door check so maybe because I don't even, it's really hard to close because it's not hanging. So we need to address that now. I'm probably going to start on the interior. A few things I noticed that were broken. This latch is broken. I did order a new one of those. And I ordered some new center caps for the factory wheels. I ordered a new door handle here. I did not notice that that was broke. But pretty common on these trucks. And I also ordered a mirror for this side. And I just ordered the mirror part. So I think you scrape that off and adhesive the new one on there. That's not something I've ever done before. So we'll have to learn that together. Uh, another thing I want to do in this video, I want to address that seat. I want to clean the carpet, especially while I got the seat out of there. My wife has a little uh, carpet extractor for the house. And I've, I've always thought about it would be handy to use on a vehicle, but never really had the option for some dirty carpet. This carpet's a little bit dirty, and I really want to get this truck cleaned up and market it as a really clean... I'm the second owner of the truck, but it's just a clean truck. Highly optioned. It's got the bucket seats and center console. That's kind of sought after in these trucks. 
It's got the third door on the passenger side. Power everything, power seats, power mirrors. This is a good truck. If I was going to keep one of these trucks, this is what I'd want. I would like to build one of these trucks eventually. This is the body style of my very first pickup, but I had a single cab. Would love to have this truck in a single cab, but extended cab is pretty cool, especially for the family guy. Another issue I'm looking at right now, our front bumper is a little bent and we got a broken park light. I've priced some of the stuff on that. The aftermarket stuff for this truck is dirt cheap, but marketing this thing as a clean two owner truck, I hate to put our aftermarket stuff on it. I really need to look into quality of the aftermarket and probably gonna have to just pony up and buy some GM parts for the front. I need to get all that stuff off there and see what I can salvage and what I can't. That's probably gonna be for another video. We're gonna focus on just drivability and cleaning the inside. I'm seeing another issue. We got a cracked windshield. That'll be able to get taken care of pretty cheap. I got a buddy that does glass. He'll come do it on site. Let's get it inside, address those door checks, get this seat pulled out, see if we can get it fixed because it's doing some major rocking. Little blaster should help. This one too. It's quite a bit better. All right, this baby up. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it in the shop for this evening. We've got some family stuff going on tonight, but we're gonna have it in there ready to hit the ground running tomorrow. Hopefully we can get this inside cleaned up. Maybe, I don't know what else, but we'll see you guys first thing in the morning. First things first, let's get this seat out. Looks like it's probably just four bolts. It is a power seat. So we've got one electrical plug, two bolts on this side, and I'm guessing this side is behind this cover. Yep, two more bolts on this side. They're probably 15 millimeter. Oh yeah. There we go. Just a little 15 millimeter headed bolts. That back one on the inside looks like it's the most difficult to get to. I'm gonna try to run the seat all the way forward. Hopefully that will help. Last bolt, and that's tight. One plug right here. Ooh, definitely needs cleaned under the seat. It is gross under there. That wasn't too bad. See, really just, you can't clean that up with your seats in your vehicles, which is something I've always liked to do is pull my seats every once in a while to get a real deep clean on my interiors. Sometimes you'll even find you a few coins. 50 cents, 60 cents, 85 cents, almost up to a dollar. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the passenger seat, see if we can turn this 85 cents into a dollar. Then we'll work on our driver's seat repair, clean the carpets, clean the seats, get it back together. I pulled all these screws on these kick plates so we can really deep clean that carpet. Go ahead and get them off there. Sad news is, I don't see any money on this side, just trash. Get this one out. Another thing is I really want to clean this seat belt. I don't know if I should take it out and power wash it. 
You have a little blue pill in there. <laughs> it's got a P on it. I think I just found half of a Pfizer. A little blue pill. They said this truck did come out of an estate. One owner truck from an older gentleman. I think we just found his little blue pill. Might save that for a rainy day. On the seat, it looks like part of this bracket that goes there broke off. I'm trying to figure out if I can maybe cover that foam up, unbolt the broken piece and get it tacked back in there. I really don't wanna disassemble this whole seat, but I may have to. All right, tracks are off. See how dirty my hands are? This is something that's really tedious because you'll end up staining your seats with all that grease on your hands. I'm gonna go wash my hands, try to get all this wiped down where we can hopefully save some stains. Then we need to try to get that welded back in there. Just like that, it looks like we might be missing a little bit of it. I think there's enough there I can get it straightened out. I think we can get some plates behind that for welding it to try to prevent melting any of that foam. Probably cover some of this up. Let me get washed up. All right, got my fire blanket on to hopefully protect the seat. I stuck this metal backing plate in here. So now we just gotta weld that piece back in there. I'm gonna attempt to do it with my TIG welder so we don't spatter as much. We'll see how it goes. I got it fairly clean. Let's get it tacked in there. Put her tacked in place. Pull my vice grips. This would definitely be a faster repair with a wire machine. So I'm worried about that spatter from the wire getting down in that foam. Really don't want to melt that foam. Yeah, it's welding pretty nice. All right, it's still pretty warm. I do have the backing plate back in behind it right now, but this is a place where you don't want to get in a hurry. I really want to save this seat. This truck's got really nice upholstery. I'm going to take a quick break, and then I'll weld the other side of it. I got both sides tacked. Have the inside of the seat welded. Need to weld the other side, but let's let it cool down. We don't want to mess the seat up. Then we should be ready to weld the other side of it and bolt our track assembly back on it. It's not the prettiest weld ever, but I was really focused on adding material on this side because we were missing a chunk there. And I think it'll be plenty strong. Another thing about using a TIG welder on that, we don't risk getting little weld spatters on those threads either. But this was our biggest issue with the truck. It was, it made it really uncomfortable to drive because you really had a full on rocking chair. <laughs> I'm gonna set that to the side for now work on cleaning the inside of it and we will also shampoo this before we reinstall it oh yeah that's a fixed seat for sure better clean those hands again found some more money got a penny here oh these little floor vents are cool hadn't noticed that i guess it's just a channel coming through here along the transmission tunnel a few more coins pennies Ooh, a quarter Take that right off the top of this investment. So that's another 25, 6, 28 cents. I'm hoping all the original spare tire tools are in here. There we go. All the original instructions, a little ratchet, extensions for dropping the spare, nice scissor jack. That is pretty neat. That's somewhat rare to see one of those just untouched. That is a nice set. All the 
dirt and sand and french fries out of it. I wanted to show you my favorite shop vac attachment, which is actually a Kirby attachment, a Kirby like house vacuum cleaner. I actually bought a set of Kirby's at an auction because I saw this and I ended up selling the Kirby's for what I paid for them and kept this little guy. This thing is made for a household Kirby vacuum cleaner, but if you use this little wedge here, you can fit it on your shop vac. Well, I think it might be a little dangerous because a shop vac pulls way harder than a Kirby. But listen to this thing. It sounds like a rocket ship. <laughs> Wind down. So, I don't know where to tell you to get one of those. Maybe I guess you can get them from Kirby. It does really awesome at agitating that carpet and getting the sand out of it. And you can see how much cleaner we are here. Ready to be shampooed. We still got a little bit of stuff here and there in the tight spots. But that's my favorite shop vac attachment. And it's not even a shop vac attachment, it's a Kirby. This is my wife's Bissell Little Green Spot Clean Shampooer or something like that. Not sure exactly what it's marketed as, but my wife uses it to spot clean stains in the house. I've thought ever since she bought it, it might be good for vehicle carpets. I will add a Amazon link to it in the description of this video, but let's see how it works first. I can tell you it does work great in the house. So if you have a use for one, the link will be in the description. I think I'll start kind of at the top and work my way out each direction. Got a little bit of a stain I want to work on here and kind of a dingy spot around where the center console goes. This thing's got a sprayer here where it sprays our carpet cleaning solution which is in the tank here. My wife just gave me a crash course on it. She said she sprays it and drags backwards. She says on tough spots she'll give it a little more scrub with that brush. that's showing up on camera it's still wet but there is a defined dirt line right here where I stopped that thing seems to be working really well now I thought as I was doing that I forgot to take a before picture so I'm gonna pull the little green machine back out of here take a picture of it before I get too far and then we'll get to work on the whole thing I think it's gonna work great I'm excited about it this little spot cleaner great for vehicles maybe first tank down look at that grossness that's the water that it's pulling back out of the carpet looking a lot better it's not perfect it doesn't seem to want to be removing this stain right here whatever that yellowish green substance is let's go empty this tank i don't know if you dump it out like this Ew. that is gross well, let's just say even if we're not getting the stains out that is some gross water and i'm glad we're doing this either way even with a few stains less left at least we'll have all that dirt out of there the results are not as dramatic as i had hoped but here's our final jug we're definitely getting a lot of dirt out so the little machine does a great Something fell over there. The little machine does a great job at extracting dirt. We've still got some stains we're dealing with. 
definitely got a lot of sand in this machine now that I'm going to have to clean up or I'm going to be in trouble with the wife. Well, this is what it looks like after one pass with the little green machine. And we still have a few stains here and there, like this one and this one. I don't really know what they are, but it definitely got all the dirt out. It looks a lot better. I was hoping to get some of those stains out, but I think we're just going to need a stronger detergent. So if you know a good product for getting those types of stains out, I've got the little extractor green machine thing. If you know something, let me know in the comments and I'll give it a shot. I do think I can get to most of those with the seats back in it. So I think throughout this week and the evenings, I will be putting the interior back together. I'll go ahead and get the seats back in it. Probably won't film any of that. Dirty guy. I'm gonna clean him. In three, two, one, go. Just like that, all clean with AJ's help. <gasps> AJ did a lot of it by himself. Yeah. Really nice and clean. Ah. So my brother, if you sit in those seats for like two weeks, that's gonna be all over you. <laughs> Back over to Dad. I know we didn't accomplish much today. But we got started, we got out here, and we did something, and that's what matters. Don't know what the future of this truck is. We're in it for, I spent $4,500 at the auction. Spent another probably a little over 100 bucks on it. I'm guessing I'm probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $5,200 in it by the time I get everything I want fixed. I need to get it cleaned up in the next video. Considering getting some PDR work done, that's paintless dent repair, I'd like to get some of these small dents taken care of while preserving what appears to be the factory paint so let me know what you think am i in it for the right money did i spend too much am i crazy thinking this truck is worth a lot more than that i'll quit rambling thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate you being here we'll see you on the next video